Hello, everybody. I'm Larry Ridley, and this is the NFL on EA Sports. The second meeting of the year on tap here between these two fierce AFC rivals. These teams know each other very well, and that only serves to stoke the flames of what is always a heated battle. It's the Bengals going up against the Steelers. So with kickoff straight ahead, we'll check in with our broadcast team. Here are Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. All right, Larry, EA Sports coverage of the NFL brings us to the steel capital of the world, Pittsburgh, PA, and Heinz Field. Today, it's week four, and we've got what should be a great one here between the Cincinnati Bengals and the Pittsburgh Steelers. Throw on first down with Roethlisberger. And his first look is incomplete. Antonio Brown, the intended receiver. And now it's second down. On your screen now, here are the offensive starters. At wideout, Antonio Brown is certainly someone that the defense always has to account for. Without a doubt, a true number one receiver. It doesn't matter to him how defenses want to cover him. He sees it as a challenge and knows how to defeat him. And on second and ten now. Second and ten now. It's Roethlisberger. And he takes a shot on the release as this will be incomplete. And the Bengals starting defensive unit now. It seems like whenever people talk about Chris Long, the number one thing they discuss is his motor and how relentless he is. Let's not forget, he's also a superior athlete. So now an early third and ten here on their opening drive. He's going to wind up and air it out. And he couldn't hang on to it through the contact. Incomplete. On every offensive coordinator, every play caller sheet, they have about five or six plays per game that they call shot plays or big plays. And you don't get many opportunities to dial them up. And they just did. And they drop it with a great chance to make a big play. That's going to hurt. This will be fielded at the 17. A very good return that time. 18 yards. And the Bengals take possession. A first carry now. This is Hill. And he'll be taken down across the 50 at the 45 in enemy territory. The offensive line and its ability to open holes in this defensive front, something they were confident they could create in this game, got the job done there, picked up the first. And something they wanted to do. Have we ever met offensive linemen that don't want to fire out and hit people? I mean, they I'm love scared of the running game. Linemen. Guys want to do that. And when you emphasize it, practice it, and work on it, that gives you an opportunity during the game. They stick on the ground on first down with Hill. And he's able to get this one down to about the 40. Five yards on the carry. Good pickup on first down. And that's exactly what you want on a first down run. Pick up five yards, bring up second and five. The defensive line, though, they've got to figure out a way to out leverage the guys up front because the offensive line is winning at the point of attack. Five yards left for the offense. It's second down. Hey, 
The play fake to Hill. Dalton. And the catch made. It's Tyler Boyd. And that one results in 35 yards. Trying to defend a drag route is really tough because you don't want to jump a route that's shorter or underneath as the drag route is too quickly because oftentimes they want to run that route and then hit over the top of you for bigger yardage. So if you can, if you can chip off the timing of the receiver off the line of scrimmage so he can't actually get into the route, that's the best way to defend it. But there was no possibility of that on that play. End result, receiver won in a big way. First try for this offense today and our first chance to get a look at Tyler Eifert. And he's part of the new wave of tight ends in the NFL. They use them in every position, sometimes even by themselves as a wide receiver. Looking to jam the receivers at the line here. Press coverage look defensively. They'll run it with Hill. It'll go as no gain on the play, and now they're looking at a third and goal. Time here to show you the starters while we have a moment defensively for the Pittsburgh Steelers, and I know one guy you like from Miami, Artie Burns. Just jumps off the screen when you plug in his college tape in terms of athleticism. And I also watched him play with some intelligence. Saw him at one point jump into the slot. And he takes it into the end zone. Touchdown, Bengals. Jeremy Hill, his third touchdown now on the year. And the Bengals are going to take a first quarter lead. And he's got it to make it 7 0 Bengals. The kicking team out now for the Bengals as they'll send this one away. This will be taken in at the one. And he'll get it up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. Out comes the Steeler offense now, ready to see what they can do here. And the last drive, their first drive, three and out. What changes here, if anything? I think it's making sure the guys that you trust the most with the ball, the biggest playmakers you have, that they touch it on this possession to try and get things moving. So get it to the horses. Without a doubt. They're the ones that typically end up in the end zone. Here's the first carry for Le'Veon Bell. And he'll get this one up to the 26. Call it a gain of four on first, and that'll make it second down. Not a run that you're going to write home about, but still a good first down run. That's what an offense calls staying on schedule. Three to four yards on first down. You're set up very well for the rest of the drive. Second down following the run. They'll go again with Bell. And this time he's not going anywhere. They'll get him down right at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play there, so they're left with a third down and six. And as a defensive end, getting off the ball quickly, swarming to the football, making a tackle, that's what we saw right there. Yeah, that's what their job is. And really, a lot of the time, they have to throttle back a little bit in the run game because you know those defensive ends. They're like in a sprinter stance. They're just headed straight for the quarterback. That was good recognition on that play to hold them to no gain. Defense sinking pass. They've got the nickel set out on 36. Now Roethlisberger to throw. And Green with a catch left side. And a great effort there to shed the contact. And it helps him pick up the first. When you execute a drag or a crossing route really well and give them a chance to let it develop a little bit, you can gain some significant yardage hitting your tight end on that one. They come up with one running back. That's Bell. 49, 49, guys. Mike, Mike. Throwing now. Roethlisberger on first down. Flush to his right. And he'll be hit as he releases it. And that'll fall incomplete. It's a tried and true formula, and I don't think it'll change for as long as we play football. If someone's trying to throw the ball and you can put pressure on them and make it tough, that's only going to help your defense. Yeah, he's since being hurried. He got rid of it before taking the hit, but incomplete. Oh, 
second down here after the incomplete pass. Second and ten. It's Roethlisberger once more. This is caught by Antonio Brown. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. And connection number one there on the game, Roethlisberger to Boney Tony. Antonio Brown, that's what his high school teammates used to call him. I wonder what they would call him now. A more muscular, more successful Boney Tony Brown, right? <laughs> I'd say you're probably right. It may be all of that. I'll still call him Boney Tony, but Ben Roethlisberger calls it my number one target. They'll come out in the pistol. Here we go. 2-2. Now Roethlisberger on first down. And that's caught. Did he stay in bounds, though? He did not. Ruled incomplete. I don't know about you, but I wanted to reach out of the booth and snatch that pass myself. That thing floated forever up there. I think that threw off the timing of the receiver. That's why he couldn't get his feet down even though he caught the ball. You know, Charles, I, I would have liked to have seen that. Yeah, me I, too. For, for you. I, I wanted to see you reach out and catch that. Yeah, you've heard about my hands, huh? <laughs> so incomplete on first. Let's see what second down has in store. Again on second and ten, it's Roethlisberger. And a double coverage, and it's intercepted. A great read, and it's picked off. And they have possession, and they have it at the 38-yard line. Cincinnati now ready to take the field. And they were able to punch it in the end zone last time. They'll be looking to do that again here for the defense. Obviously, they'll be looking to stop them from punching it back in the end zone. It always is punch counter punch, isn't it? And which team has the advantage? Let's just go back. Last time on offense, they rolled downfield, got into a good rhythm. You can see a little more bounce in and out of the huddle. You can see the sideline really get into the game. So defensively, you think to yourself, how do we take that away from them? How do we get the advantage back? Let's see what they come up with. I think pressure is always the first way to go. If <laughs> you love pressure, we'll see, I love it. we'll see if they dial it up this drive. They go play action here on first down. And he's going to drop this off to his fullback. And they'll be inside the 35 now at the 34-yard line. Give him 10 yards on the pickup, and that'll make it second and a foot or so. It's interesting because when I'm watching college football and I'm evaluating guys for the draft now, my list of fullbacks, pure fullbacks, it's a very short list. I'm probably evaluating more punters and kickers now than I am fullbacks. But it doesn't matter what you call the position, it's who you put there. And there we saw completion. On second down, Hill. And he works it to the 30-yard line here, right at the 30. But just four yards on the pickup, but that's good enough to extend the drive. Second and inches is oftentimes an invitation for an offense coordinator to take a big shot downfield because he feels like he can come back on third down and pick up the first down. But sometimes you just don't want to break tendency. Stay with what you are, stay with who you know, and go get the first down. That's exactly what they do. They run it again with Hill. And this carry not as productive. He's swallowed up at the line of scrimmage. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. Now that's the type of play that'll fire up a defense, hold them to one yard on a first down run. It'll be interesting to see if the offense decides to press the run at all or if they'll abandon it now after gaining only one on that play. It's second down, Dalton looking. And he fires one that's intercepted. It's Clay Matthews with a pick. And they're going to take over right there at the 22-yard line. And now out come the Steelers. And following the interception, we'll see what they can put together on this drive. I hear my old college coach right now. He always used to tell us before every game, the team making the fewest mistakes will win. What they're hoping is that that last mistake is their only one of the game. Coaches, that's all they talk about, turnovers, right? <laughs> Minimizing those and maximizing opportunities. They come up in an offset eye. Green, the tight end, in motion. They'll start out on the ground with Bell. And running room scarce here. He's going to be stopped in his tracks at the line of scrimmage. A one-yard gain can look like a disaster, but it all depends on how the game is going. 
Is it a series of one-yard gains running the ball? If that's the case, you might have to start thinking about throwing it a little bit more. But if it's just the occasional one-yard run, hey, congratulations to the defense. They won that one. Come back and get them the next time. And after the play on the ground, that brings up second down here. A fake to Bell. Now it's Roethlisberger. And they get to him with a pressure as Roethlisberger goes down. Michael Johnson in there to drop him for his fifth sack of the year. And now the Bengal defense here calling a timeout. They'll have two remaining as we step aside here in this second quarter. Well, he challenged the play. It did not pay off. And that means he lost a timeout in that challenge. And as a coach, you hate that. Don't know if you took the advice of the player. You threw it yourself, but it didn't go your way. At the end of the day, it all comes back to the head coach. He has the final determination on whether to actually challenge the player or not. In this case, it didn't pay off for him. And that's got to be so heartbreaking. You throw that flag, you probably feel really confident. And then all of a sudden, boom, you lose the challenge. Yeah, when you take a look at it, you're throwing that flag because you believe you're going to be right. And when it comes back the other way, you have to regroup. Trying for Brown, and it's intercepted. A great read, and it's picked off. And the return will stop right around the 25. So now the Bengal offensive unit back out onto the field. And following the interception, just any interception, are you a little bit more cautious when you start that next drive, or no, you just throw that out the window? I think you are. I don't think that there's any way you can run back out there and go, ah, totally didn't affect me. Let's just go ahead and be loose with the football again. You're going to take care of it, but you have to be careful about being too cautious because now you can't run any offense at all. Still want to attack. We'll see how they attack them here. Looks like the defense in press coverage here. Second down, Dalton on the right side, caught by Green. And he'll go down here at the 12-yard line. Five yards is the pickup there as that extends this drive. So we have now seen connection number one between Dalton and Adriel Jeremiah, A.J. Green. Say that again. Adriel Jeremiah. Look at you. You are full of knowledge <laughs> and information. And you know something? I bet Andy Dalton learned his full name as well because he figured out quickly, this is going to be my number one target. i got to name this guy in a big way. Now a first down carry. It's Hill. And a pickup of about four down inside the 10 to the 8-yard line. And there's a run to be happy with. Good, solid yardage. He'll take that any time you hand the ball to a back. Hill, the lone set back. The play fake to Hill. Dalton. That's caught at the one. And he'll take this into the end zone for a Bengal TD. Tyler Boyd, his fourth touchdown on the year. And the Bengals add on to their lead. And it's good to make it 14 0. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. And no return on this one as the fair catch is signaled for and taken. The Steelers' offense now, they head back onto the field.
They'll start the drive with a carry by Bell. And the big boys up front, they're going to stop him right at the line. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. The best defensive linemen, they play with great leverage so they can get low and not get bowled over by offensive linemen. They have excellent hands. They can throw people off on a play. We just saw a great example of a really good run stop by a guy playing the defensive tackle position. So second and nine, the defense looking to put them in a bad spot here. Again, it's Bell. And he'll fight forward to about the 27-yard line. Back-to-back one-yard runs here, so that leaves him with a third down and eight. I do know from experience that when you slow down someone's running game, you're now doing the dictating on defense, and guess what? Now you're getting ready to tee off on their quarterback because they have to throw it all the time. But you still have to be alert for the draws and other plays of that nature to make sure you don't get hurt. A nickel back added defensively as they look to stop this third and eight. Here's Roethlisberger. He gets it to Brown. Good play. And he's got the first before he's brought down at the 39-yard line. I don't care how many times we see it. I still get a kick out of watching quarterbacks and receivers do the pass trick in pregame warm-up. But I always remember that when we go to practices, we see that after practices as well. They really tune it up, don't they? They tune it up. They know why they do it for these situations. First down. And they build that trust, and that's why they're able to find him in this type of a situation. In motion is Coates. Throwing now. Roethlisberger on first down. And it pops free. The collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down. That was a classic example of trying to run with the ball without securing the catch. He was saying about those rack yards instead of making the catch first and then taking off. They come up with one running back. That's Bell. Second and ten. It's Roethlisberger once more. And Big Ben intercepted a third time. Picked off by Adam Jones. And they take possession two yards away from midfield at the 48-yard line. They come out here in the eye. Now a 10th carry for Hill. And they will stop him after a fairly minimal pickup. It's a pickup of four, and it'll bring up second down. We always like to talk about defense in terms of levels. First level defensive line, second level linebackers, third level defensive backs. On that run, that was what we call a first level run, and it was stopped by a second level player. See if they stay on the ground for second down. Possible run anticipation here as the D-line sandwiches together. Play clock winding down. Dalton bootlegs out. Brought in here by Tyler Eifert. And he will take it on in for a Bengals touchdown. Tyler Eifert, his second touchdown on the season. And the Bengals are able to grow their lead. Boy, it's nice to have that big, reliable target you can go to. Each and every time. A lot of people see that position as a fallback. Throw it to them when all else fails. Not at all. This guy can make plays, and that's exactly what he just did. Yeah, play here for a touchdown. Out is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. And that'll carry over the back line of the end zone for a touchback. And Pittsburgh getting set to take the field. Go, 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 go
They go back to the air here after the INT on the last drive. Now left side here to Bryant. 11 yards on the pickup, and it's good enough for a Pittsburgh first down. When you see zone defense and you know you've got a drag route on as your primary call, you've got to be really careful as a passer about how far you let your guy go because he might wander into some tough coverage. Roethlisberger. Looking left sideline, incomplete. Sammy Coates, the intended target there. And it's second down. I hope I don't sound too rah-rah on that one, but that's the exact right throw. Either your receiver gets it, or no one gets it. Give him a lot of credit for being really precise with it. Got rid of it, no one got it. Ten. It's Roethlisberger going up top. And incomplete there. A nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. Well, they went for the big play there, but that drop could really hurt their momentum. Ten yards to go on third. Roethlisberger. And his pass is intercepted for the fourth time today. A great read and it's picked off. And his guys are going to get the football at their own 47-yard line. The Bengals offense now, they head back onto the field. And they will simply, Charles, be looking to duplicate what they did last drive when they were able to push it in for six. And they hope it'll be that easy, right? To be able to take exactly what happened before, replicate it. They may have to make a few additional changes along the way because I'm sure the defense will make some adjustments, but they've got to have great confidence having scored the last time out. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. Two minutes remain here in the first half. Back to Heinz Field after this. So they're still at the original line of scrimmage here. Second down and 10. Hill, the lone setback. The play fake to Hill. Dalton. And the hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. Today's NFL, these big guys are featured receivers. They move all over the place to try and find good matchups. And they had one. They were just unable to complete the pass. So incomplete on second down. Now they'll look to convert here on third. They send Green to the left on his own. Third down, a shot here for Dalton. Pressure comes, and the Steelers take him down. Stephon Tewitt coming in to drop him for a loss of eight, and it'll be fourth down. The Bengals bring out their punter now. Back deep for the Steelers, Antonio Brown. Boy, he came in off the edge so quickly there. Look out, because that's exactly what it was being shouted by the offensive lineman to his quarterback because he had no chance to block him. it away and I think they'll smartly play keep away here from Brown and it's out of bounds now we'll see what the side judge says he says out at the eight yard line the Steelers offense now they get ready to head back on the field
very tough spot here for the offense to start. They come out five wide, three of them to the right side. Trying to shake off the interception from the last drop. And he goes down. It's a sack. They get him back at his own three-yard line. Well, if an offense is going to throw the ball in this part of the field, any pass rusher will tell you that's his favorite part. Gets a chance to get after the quarterback. It's almost like a reverse red zone. They can create points using their defense, and this time they take their man down. They come up with one running back. That's Bell. He's going to get the football. Only two yards on the pickup there, and now they're looking at a long third down. And play is stopped here. Timeout. It's the defense calling the timeout here. And with halftime on the horizon, they'll be out of timeouts from here forward. And it looks like we've got a dime set here defensively. Six DBs in the game. Roethlisberger with a give to Bell. Just a one-yard gain on the play, and that'll mean a call to the punt team as it's fourth down. We often talk of situational football. Let's just call it team football. The defense did their job, got off the field, brought up a punting situation, so they're turning the ball back over to their offense. You think those guys would get along very well right now? Of course they will. Defense helped the offense. Now it's their turn to take it downfield. Here's Jordan Berry now. On for his second punt. He'd take a repeat of his first. So we have reached halftime here, and it's the visiting Bengals out in front as we send you down to our EA Sports Studios in Orlando where we find our man Larry Ridley with our halftime report. Both teams appear ready for the fight ahead, and we resume action here in quarter number three. This is taken near the 13. And a good return. He's across the 35-yard line, right around the 36. The Bengal offense now with a football first here to begin quarter number three. They built a good first half lead. Now they have a chance to add on to it. And what I'm thinking is that the offensive staff spent the entire halftime just working with them on, here's what we think they're going to do to attack us in the second half. Nice first half that we've had, guys, but be prepared for some change-ups. We're going to see them when we kick it off in the second half. See how they handle any adjustments that might be made defensively. The H-back, Ryan Hewitt, the intended receiver, and that'll bring up second down. And still needing 10 yards. Second down. Passing again. Dalton on second and 10. Rush coming and he's taken down. Ryan Shazier leading the surge there. He drops in for a loss of six. Well, it was second long. Now it's third and even longer. They're going in the wrong direction here. Because they're moving exactly the way they want to. But you're exactly right. Definitely going in the wrong direction for the offensive guys. Fakes the give to Bernard. Dalton. And incomplete. The contact made the ball roam free and brings up fourth down. Whenever I see a drop like that, I have to kind of take a step back and check myself a little bit. So used to seeing those big guys make big-time spectacular plays that when they drop one, I have to remind myself, we ask a lot out of these guys. Block and catch the football, not easily done in today's NFL. With it is Brown. 12 yards on the return that time. And the Steelers will go on offense here, first and 10. Time for the Steelers' offense now to get set for their first possession of half number two. They were able to get the stop defensively. Now a chance to turn that into points on the offensive end. Can you imagine what the grease board looks like at the half? Because no, tell me. That's exactly what they printed up. 
stop them on defense, get the ball back for our offense, and go downfield and score some points. Now, the last part remains to be seen, but they got the first part done very well. Do people use grease boards, or you mean the magic marker boards? Yeah, those two. <laughs> time by Michael Johnson. Tough day, tough sledding right there, and it's been that way the entire game. Not a whole lot of room to ramble for him. Yeah, you're right. It's been that way all afternoon. Didn't get a whole lot better there. Decent chunk of yardage still left here. Second and seven. They'll put two receivers left, two to the right. On second down, Roethlisberger. Brought in by Coates. That catch good for only a yard, and it'll be third down. Bengals with two extra DBs, a nickel look on third. Blanketing the passing lanes. From midfield now, here's Roethlisberger. And he couldn't hang on to it through the contact. Incomplete. Everything looked right on that play except the conclusion. He dropped it, an in route, going into a little bit of traffic. Maybe in the back of his mind, he was wondering where the hit was going to come from. Here's Jordan Berry now. He'll boot it away from about his 35. And here's a very low line drive, almost whiffed on it. Pulled in at the 24. Well, not good at all. Punted just 24 yards there. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. Cincinnati now ready to take the field. They got the lead. Last time had to punt it, though. What's the key to this drive? I think it's leverage. Ah, the leverage. big guys up front. You know the motivational speech on the sideline is, guys, give us an opportunity. Protect the passer, create space for our runners, and let's go ahead and get these guys. No man wins. Let's go do it on this drive. <laughs> we'll watch that leverage on this drive. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. 15 yards there on the catch and run. I like watching the wide receiver screen because it's a real teamwork play. Because guess what? The guy catching the ball, he'll get all the credit. But how about the people up the block in front of him? Either fellow receivers or offensive linemen. That makes that play a really nice timing play. And sometimes it can break big. Yeah, give him four yards there. It'll be second and six. Well, if you're a football guy, that's a pretty run because everyone is in sync right there. Obviously, the guy carrying the ball. But how about the people up front? Leverage, athleticism. They created some nice space for him. Second down of the offense in search of six yards. Again, it's Hill. Evades the tackler and now some space. The 20. And all the way in for a Cincinnati score. Jeremy Hill with his second touchdown of the game, fourth of the year. And the Bengals add on to their lead. And he certainly played a pivotal role with those two TDs and why they're up on the scoreboard right now. Well, someone's all about winning, aren't they? Because he's not worried about the number. Sure, it's great to have two touchdowns. But the bottom line is what he's doing is contributing to their lead. He wants to continue to do so.
The kicking team out now for the Bengals as they'll send this one away. This will be taken in at the one. And not a bad return here. He gets it out to the 25-yard line. The Steelers' offense now, they head back onto the field. And down on the scoreboard, certainly needing to avoid what happened on the last drive, punting the football. Sense of urgency has to take over for them here. They know the score. They know the situation. And by the way, the punter no longer exists for their <laughs> offense. That's how they have to treat this drive. They need points. Big time. They'll put two receivers left, two to the right. Throwing now, Roethlisberger on first down. It's complete to Brown, right side. The completion good for three, and it's second down. And when you're playing a quarterback with some experience and some moxie, you enter the danger zone when you decide to blitz him because if he's able to diagnose as he did on that play, he can hurt you downfield. He reads defenses so well, doesn't he? He really does, and the best part about that play for him, I don't think that was his primary target. I don't think so either. I think he had the read, figured out where the blitz was coming from, and went to a secondary target for a really nice game. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. And he goes for 18 there as the drive will continue. And after that completion, you can understand why so many teams in the league are emphasizing speed on defense at every position. The tight ends have created so many tough matchups now. If you can't run with a tight end as a linebacker, this is going to be the result every time. Now Roethlisberger to throw. He couldn't quite hold it. Got hit. Ball pops out. Incomplete. We know it's not an easy job to go out and catch passes when people are trying to tackle you and knock the ball away. But the bottom line is, that's a pass he's got to have and a pass he should have caught. Ten yards still left on second down. They're running it. Switch, switch, switch. Again on second and ten, it's Roethlisberger. He's going to sling this deep downfield. And my goodness, another interception. Picked off by Adam Jones. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. The interception woes, they just continue to mount. He's thrown five picks. At this point, you got to be thinking, is it something between the ears? I think a confidence hit does occur once you start getting those numbers up there a little bit. But as you and I both know, it's not always just one guy's fault. Maybe somebody ran the wrong pattern. Maybe some balls were tipped. It could be so many different things. Bottom line, though, it comes back to the guy throwing them. You know how we get focused at end of the half and end of the game situations about how much time's on the board and, you know, what you need to do? Sometimes you don't have to worry about that. That's just smart football. You know, that kind of a lead, staying in bounds, it burns clock, even in a situation that we're not really focused on it. And five yards on the play there as the drive will continue. Love the call by the offensive coordinator, recognizing the situation very well, calling for the play-action pass and completing it. Dalton with a give to Hill. Fighting through, and he'll get this up to the 34-yard line. Give him 11 yards that time and a new set of downs. Final minute now of the third quarter. They come out here in the eye. They send Green to the left on his own. Here's Dalton. Complete to the right side. It's Eifert. Give him a couple on the catch. It's second and eight. Well, the strategy was evident there. Get it to your tight end and make it a one-on-one -on -one play with a cornerback. Who's usually going to win that one? The tight end, but not there. Not in this situation. How about the corner defeating that logic and making a really nice tackle? Back now in Pittsburgh. A lot of folks starting to make their way to the parking lot. Their guys trail big here to begin quarter number four. They come up in an offset eye. Zebra! 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 Blue 10! Blue 10! 
It's second down. Dalton looking. Out to the flat. That's complete to his running back. And he'll get it out near the 40 to the 39. It'll be a pickup of just two. And they're going to face a third down. Right, I'm going to show my age here a little bit. We used to talk about running backs catching the ball as safety valves. Nowadays, they're a big part of the passing offense. Quit acting like you're so old. You're only 65. <laughs> Time running out here on the play clock. Now a first carry for Giovanni Bernard. And he's got the first down yardage as he brings this up to the 47. Eight yards on the pick up there, and it moves the sticks. On third down, that's a good job of situational football and understanding where the first down marker was and getting there. They stay on the ground. This time it's Hill. And for one of the few times here today, this run's not going to go anywhere. No gain on the play there. Second down. But we stopped on that play. We've had plenty of carries all afternoon. Every now and then the defense is going to win one, but I don't think they'll shy away from handing it to him the rest of the game. They'll need to get the playoff quickly. And once again, Hill, he's been busy. And the cutback to the sideline. There goes Jeremy Hill. And all the way in for a Cincinnati score. Jeremy Hill, his third touchdown of the game and fifth on the year. And the Bengals just continue to pour it on. The call is to go for one and kick the extra point. And he's been a busy man. Five for five now as he knocks another one through to extend the lead. The kicking team out now for the Bengals as they'll send this one away. This will be taken to the back of the end zone. And no run back.
Thank you, Larry. Brandon Gordon, along with Charles Davis here in the booth, we are set for a spectacular draft champions matchup and some spectacular talent on your screen right now. Let's not waste any more time. Let's get down to the field for kickoff. The punter pinion now to kick this one away. This is taken at his four. And he's up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. Mariota on first down. And he's going to drop this off to Williams. Complete. And they'll take him down at the 31-yard line. It's a nine-yard pickup on the play, and it'll be second and about a yard to go for the first. Completed pass play. Now let's see if they go back to the air or to the ground. Now a second down from Ben. Oh, right away, he lost the football. On plays like this where the ball comes free, it's often unusual for the team that lost it to get it back. Because this is, this is the quarterback. The ball gets away from him. Everyone else is trying to execute what they're supposed to do on offense. They're usually looking in the other direction, downfield, or have moved away from him. In this case, though, a teammate is able to come up with the ball. Third and 11, five in the secondary now. Nickel look. He's going to launch this thing way downfield. Oh, and this ball's tipped and intercepted. A great read, and it's picked off. And his guys are going to get the football at their own 47-yard line. Certainly not how they envisioned ending their opening drive here in the first quarter. Too many ones in this play. First quarter, first drive, first interception thrown. And that last one, that hurts. Here's the first carry now for Frank Gore. Give him a couple on the carry there, second and eight. That's a good play by the guys on the defensive side of the ball. Held him to a gain of two. And that changes the playbook a little bit now for the guy calling plays. Second and eight. Now he's got to probably think about going to the air instead of maybe staying with the ground game. We ready? Now on second down, this is Gore. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest gain. And on the tackle, Jonathan Babineau. Frustrating for a defense, energizing for an offense. Finding a way to create that type of yardage in your running game, that'll make the guys carrying the ball very, very happy. From the gun now on third down, Carr underneath Ivory. And he's got the first before he's brought down at the 39-yard line. It goes as a gain of eight that moves the chains. So here we go, first and ten now. Now a play fake here on first down. Looking for his running back, and he's got it. And they're able to get this one past the 30, down to the 25. It's a gain of 14 there, and that leads to a Green Bay first. Now a 
it's Gore. And he's going to take this one down to about the 23-yard line. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. Well, I think we know by now that every run is not going to be broken and get all the way to the end zone. But these short ones still have their value. You can still set up the play action and throw the football. You control the clock because the, you have the ball and they don't. And often the physicality sets the tempo for the game. And he is going to lose yardage here. It's a loss of two. Now third down. The defense won that play so fast that I think if the running back even had time to notice if anyone was there, it was just a blink of an eye, and there was a loss on the play. And defensively, it's a nickel formation here on third down and nine. Throwing his car on third down. But he locates Wheaton complete. And they do stop him, but he takes it all the way to the two. And fits the exact right word. Over the middle, there's almost always traffic. So anytime you're a receiver in that area, you're not just focused on catching the football. You're wondering where the collision's going to come from, right? Because there's almost always someone there able to concentrate, catch it, and even add a little extra at the end with a short run. Devontae Parker was the intended receiver, and that'll bring up second down. All defenders get tired of hearing about their lack of hands and why they're playing defense instead of offense, but in this situation, it was the hands that made the play. Batting the ball away on an attempted touchdown. Touchdown, Packers! Marcus Wheaton from a yard out, and the Packers have taken the early lead. Well, that's about as quick of a passing touchdown as you'll ever see right there. Everyone has a section in their playbook called the quick game. That was a super quick game. Out of the hands of the thrower, bam, right to the receiver, successfully for a touchdown. How in-depth is that quick game part of the playbook? It's pretty in-depth because people want the ball out of the hands of the quarterback into the playmaker's hands downfield as fast as possible. There are a lot of plays, a lot of options involved with that. Following the touchdown now, it's Bradley Pinion on to kick this one away. Dante Moncrief now here on the return. And he'll take this up past the 20 and down at the 22-yard line. Here's the Buffalo offense now as they get set to take over here. Try to get one more in here before the quarter breaks. Trying to shake off the interception from the last drive. He'll look to throw. And he was hit as he threw it there, and it forces it incomplete. The good signal calls would never go back in the huddle and throw the blame game because they need those guys to protect him. But on that last one, his offensive line, they lost their leverage very quickly, and that's why they were able to get to him and hit him as he tried to throw the football and force an incompletion. A second down throw here, and he is going to go down. He will be sacked on the final play of this first quarter. With Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. Second quarter about to get underway with the Bills in possession. They do, however, have a tough third and long coming up. Third and long here for Mariota. And this is going to be incomplete. It's always tough for the guys throwing the football when they think they've got a completion and the ball's almost there and then someone sneaks a hand or two in and bats it away. Oh, it's a wobbler here. 
pretty woeful there. Just 23 yards on the punt. And the Packers will have a short field to work with here as they take over first and 10. The Green Bay offense now about ready to take possession here. And that recipe on their last drive that resulted in a touchdown looked pretty good. So they'll be hoping to do that once more. It takes me back to when we sat with the offensive coordinator and the head coach. They felt pretty good about their game plan and thought there were some holes in the defense, and they exploited them the last time out. Let's see if they can come back and put together a similar drive. And we'll see if they can do just that. On first down, it's Gore. Muscles him off. A solid run on first down. Gain of seven leaves him with a second and three. Offensive linemen love creating space for their guys carrying the ball. But when that guy also breaks tackles and creates extra yardage, they almost feel like he's one of them, and they really embrace him. Car to throw on second down. And throw right side complete to Parker. And he's going to take it in. Touchdown, Packers. Devontae Parker, 26 yards. And the Packers add six to their lead. Now that touchdown won't allow you to totally relax, but you can breathe a little easier now. Just increased their lead. And it's good to make it 14-0. Following the touchdown now, it's Bradley Pinion on to kick this one away. This is taken about seven yards deep. And he'll get it up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. And here come the Bills. And three and out on the last drive. No points on the scoreboard. A little soul-searching now. I would say so, and they need to help out their defense a little bit. They've had to be on the yeah, field a lot position. more than normal, put them in some tough spots. But what's the old adage? When you get another chance, it gives you a better chance to do it right. Now problems right out of the gate. We're going to get a delay. Again, they won't get this off in time. They come out with one back and three tight ends. Blitz coming and down he goes. Jalen Smith able to disrupt yet another pass play. His third sack of the afternoon. Back near his goal line. And he's going to go down for a fourth time today. And this time the result is a safety. Well, this whole line, they've had trouble with a pass rush all game long. This time, it cost them two points. I mean, you've got a quarterback back there who's running for his life, and he's had no time to throw the football. They sacked him time and again, and this time, they do it in the end zone. You said it, partner. No time, none whatsoever. So a free kick situation forthcoming from the 20 as they'll punt this one away. He'll take it at the 42. Partner, when I was in
All right, Larry, thank you. It is indeed time for a draft champions matchup and what is set to be a great draft champions matchup in the booth. I'm Brandon Gordon with Charles Davis, and these guys should have a huge impact on the outcome of this game. They're ready to roll. We're ready to roll. Let's roll. Set to go now on a beautiful sunny afternoon. And we are underway from FedEx Field. To return it, here's Tavon Young. And he'll be brought down at the 23, make it the 24-yard line. Peterson alone in the backfield. Now Goff on first down. And the tight end Olsen right side. A gain of six there on first. Second down now after the pass completion. There's a completion to the tight end, and I think that we're looking at something out central casting, frankly. Absolutely. I mean, size, the hands, speed. I mean, can flat out run. You put that whole package together, you light up the eyes of an offensive coordinator, don't you? A little football one-on-one -on -one there. You just see the receiver try to run down the defender, meaning he goes right at it, and really trying to move him a little bit towards the center of the field so he can put his foot in the ground and break to the out to the sideline and make a catch. Trying to lay one up deep. In the heavy traffic, and it's intercepted. Picked off by T.J. McDonald. And his guys are going to take over at the 34-yard line. How about that interception? Like father, like son. Tim McDonald Sr. had 40 interceptions in the NFL, playing with Arizona and San Francisco. His son trying to follow in his footsteps. Now the first carry here for Frank Gore. And able to use his blockers to get this up over the 40. Eight yards on the pickup, and now they'll have some options on second and short. Second down following the run. Another carry now for Gore. And he'll get it out a couple yards shy of midfield at the 48. Call it a gain of seven, and it gets him a new set of downs. Well, we always talk about good down and distance, allowing offenses to expand their playbook. Well, second and two, that means your playbook's wide open. You can run just about anything. A lot of times, the play caller, he just looks down at his sheet, sees the short yardage runs, and goes to one of those. They go play action here on first down. So nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Zinderic Marks in there to drop him, and it'll be a loss of about eight. 
Sometimes I watch games and wonder why they use play fakes on certain passing situations because it's not going to fool anyone. I don't know if that was the case here, but the end result was the same. No one fooled. The quarterback was hit. Throwing on second down. He's going to fire one deep, middle of the field. And incomplete there. A nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. It looked like they had something there, but I think that he was thinking about running with the football before he actually hauled it in, and that led to a big drop. Dolphins bring on an extra defensive back on third down. Here's Carr to throw. And it's caught by Parker. And he's going to be out of bounds, but able to take it inside the 40-yard line. Boy, the evolution of the game and how these guys on plays like that can get out of the pocket, keep plays alive, it just makes things so much harder for defenses. It really does, and we're talking about an error in the game where the quarterbacks are the most athletically gifted that we've seen in a bunch. I mean, when you talk about collectively, it's unbelievable. So their ability to move is practiced now. It's not necessarily, oh, he just took off and you guys figure it out. When he takes off, everyone knows where to go now. They know how to run routes, change things, make themselves presentable for the quarterback. There's a lot of time that they put in on it. It's not just your static one, two, three. This is where the ball goes anymore. And after the play on the ground, that brings up second down here. And on the outside, they're playing press coverage. We're ready. Wide and yank. Wide and yank. Again, they run. Again, it's Gore. And able to push his way forward here for a good little gain. Credit the tackle to Kurt Coleman. On any running play this call, they're always hoping that it's going to break big and go the distance. But when you get a nice gain like that, you're able to do so many things anyway. You can come back and run essentially the same play again, continue to move the ball on the ground, or you can decide to throw the ball now because usually you have the defense back on its heels. Here's the seventh play of this drive. This is third and four. Jason Witten. They give him 14 yards that time and a fresh set of downs. So much goes into a successful play, doesn't it? How about that play action there? Freezing the defense just enough to bring the tight end free downfield for the completion. And the defense with their backs against the wall a little bit here as the offense is in the red zone. All right, here we go. Hey, hey, hey. 
And the play clock's running down. They'll run it now out of the gun. And stopped a few yards shy of the goal line at the three. A solid pickup of 13 sets him up first and goal. Well, they're certainly running the ball pretty well on this drive. And all I remember as a secondary guy was if you're making a lot of tackles in a game, that's usually not good for your defense. You've got to figure out how to keep things in front of you because you know there's three levels, defensive line, linebackers, and into the secondary. And if the third level is leading your team in tackles, Tackles. As a general rule, things aren't going so well for your defense. To throw his car. This will be caught at about the five. With Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. Second quarter about to get underway with the Packers in possession of the football. And they'll come up looking to keep this drive moving. And the offense readies for play number 10 of this series. On play action, it's Carr. His pass caught at the four. They'll get a couple yards on that one. And that'll make it third and goal. And when you have a guy in the back who can catch the football, you don't just use him strictly for check downs or dump offs. You make him part of the primary passing attack because what you're trying to do is get him into open field and then let him make people miss and advance the football. That'll make it fourth down after a loss of one. Partner, it's decision time now. I know it's still just the second quarter, but you have an opportunity to either kick the field goal or go for it and try and score a big time touchdown. This is why the head coaches get paid the big bucks. to the kicker. He looks like he's going to throw it. And all the gamble fails. It's incomplete. They pass up the three, fake it. It doesn't work. And out come the Dolphins now. And tough starting field position here. Here's Peterson as they begin on the ground. And he'll get this up past the five to the seven yard line. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. And that run, that changes the whole mentality about the drive right there. They were starting on their own two yard line. They just wanted enough space to pump the football successfully. Now they're talking about putting together a drive. So second and medium, second and five now. They come out here in the eye. On second down, Peterson. Oh, he's got a little daylight. And he's brought down, but not before they get it across the 20-yard line. And a nice carry there of 15 yards. I thought guys that were over 30 weren't supposed to run the football this well in the National Football League. How about that veteran leadership? A big-time run combined with some nice blocking by his offensive line. Showing that the ins and outs of being a veteran still has his place in this league. His odometer is not totally turned over yet. A gain of three, second down. Well, it wasn't much of a gain, but we're getting near the two-minute warning, so maybe they just want to get to that point, regroup, and decide what they want to do the rest of the half. And he's got it up over the 40 to the 41. That's going to be a six-yard gain. It leaves him with third down and just a yard to go. Now 
Now they run with a backup. It's Chris Ivory. And he is going to lose yardage here. The NFL teams last year a little under 50% on fourth down conversions. This is a bit tougher. Fourth and four. The throw is gone. Eluding the pressure right. And it is incomplete. Boy, a curious decision to go for it. Doesn't pan out. And the Packers are going to get the football back in excellent field position. Really nice starting field position here for the offensive unit. They'll run it now out of the gun. And an alley to run. And he's going to get this inside the 30. Give him 11 on the game there. And the Packers are going to have a first down. How many times do we say in this game is speed kills? And it does it in so many different ways. In this case, you got a back who's quick and shifty, can make moves, make people miss, but also gets to and through a hole before it can close down. That's some of the benefits of that speed, not just outrunning people in the secondary. That led to a really nice game. And he's brought down 12 yards on the pickup, and it'll give the Packers a first down. Well, coaches always talk about finding balance on offense. I don't think you can get much more balance than this. Big time run, big time pass. A one-two combination looks pretty good. How about that? Let's see if they, let's see if they can continue to take that kind of a punch, though. They come out five wide, three of them to the right side. Now Carr, and this one complete to Witten over the middle. Now, whistles come in. We're going to get a timeout here by the offense. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. Car to throw on second down. His pass caught at the four. And he'll be brought down here at the three-yard line. Seven yards on the pickup there, and now they've got it first and goal. And those first downs do add up. The offense keeps the ball moving downfield and keeps their defense on the bench, giving them a chance to rest. And he's got it. It's caught for a Packers touchdown. Dwayne Allen from three yards out. And the Packers are able to cash in for six. And that touchdown gives them a touchdown lead before they attempt the extra point. What a great way to end the half. Yeah, great job to put themselves in front. And now, see on the sideline, special teams defense scrambling, saying we want to preserve this for the final moment. Moments of this second quarter. Chris Boswell now for the extra point. Good to make it seven nothing Packers. If 
Following the touchdown now, it's Bradley Pinion on to kick this one away. And a fair catch signaled for and taken successfully. And the Dolphins offense now ready to go back out on the field. And with time quickly fading here in the second quarter, not sure how aggressively, offensively they want to play this. I think we'll find out just how much they trust their guys in this situation if they decide to take a shot. Goff on first down. And light with it here over the middle. Now hold everything here. We're going to get a timeout by the offense. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. On first down, gone. And that is incomplete. 16 seconds now on the clock. I think that's a big-time play there because the slant route is really hard to cover because the timing is so quick. But able to see it, diagnose it, and get to the football, that's why he's able to bat it away. Unable to connect on the first down pass play. Now it's second down. Second and ten. Golf again. And that's going to be incomplete. 12 seconds left. Kendall Wright, the intended target. And that'll make it third down. When you see passes knocked down by those guys I call the frustrated fullbacks, the linebackers, you know that in their zone coverage, they're able to drop, see the ball thrown, and react to it very quickly. Incomplete. And we're down to eight seconds now. Let's give some credit to the defensive guys on that play. Able to bat that one away. Sure looked like they were trying to hit the corner route. The three straight incompletions, they don't care. That hasn't dissuaded them. They're going to go for it on four. It's a five-receiver set. Three to the left, two to the right. Here's gone. Got a man, it's right. And he will have a first down as they get him to the ground at the 37. Now whistles come in. We're going to get a timeout here by the offense. So as they take it over, we step aside. And that one's not going to get there. Not enough juice. An ambitious effort, but it's well short. So that would have been something from that distance, but to no avail. Comes up empty as we have reached the intermission. As we'll send you down the coast to Orlando, where we check in with our friend Larry Ridley and the EA Sports Halftime Report. Larry, this is taken about seven yards deep. And he's up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. The Packers offense now, they get ready to head back on the field. They have the lead, now they'll be looking to extend that lead. And this is where I enjoy talking about one of my favorite subjects, tendency breakers, or counters as I also like to call them. You've done things in a certain way in the first half, and they've had ability to see what you've done. They're going to make their adjustments. So guess what? You adjust yourself and try and stay ahead of the pace because you are looking for some separation in this ball game. The adjustment to the adjustment. Without a doubt. <laughs> show him one thing, put him with something else. And yeah, nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. Then he got off the end there very quickly to make that play. Yeah, it was almost like the bullet train, wasn't it? I mean, just zoom. Quick, quick, quick. And what a terrific play, holding them to no gain. They'll stick to the ground game with Gore. And he'll get this up over the 25 to the 26. Give him four on the ground there. They're now left with third and six. When you find that kind of yardage, you couldn't be more confident as a ball carrier. And guess what? You're going to go back and tell your offensive coordinator, I'd like to keep carrying it, thank you. They come up in an offset eye. Card out of throw. 
And he locates Wheaton complete. And he's going to have the first down at about the 38. That was a nicely run slant route. And what the receiver's trying to do is make the defender think he's going upfield for a deeper route and then breaks it off, usually after about three to four steps and cuts towards the middle of the field. And now what he's trying to do is use his body to keep the defender away from the football and get the quarterback a really nice target. Carry number 10 for Frank Gore. And he'll get this up past the 45 to the 47. That one good for 10 yards. And it'll be second and very short. Really tough drive, but that run helped salvage something there because now there's something positive that came out of it. We got to see good blocking, good push by the offensive line, wide receivers trying to get involved, a good run by the back. And now maybe it'll be a catalyst for them to look at Going forward, watching it on tape, maybe they can keep incorporating that type of a run into their offense. See if they stay on the ground for second down. They were looking for him in the middle third. He couldn't catch it. Now third down. After watching him drop that slant, I can hear my old coach's voice ringing in my ears right now. You can't run with the ball until you catch it. Trying to get those rack yards before he secured it. And the offense looks to pick up the first here on third after that incompletion. They'll try and pick up the first with Gore. And he's got the first down before being taken down at the 46. They get six on the pick up there as the drive will continue. I always appreciate runners who understand situations. That was just third and inches. No reason to dance around in the backfield and try and break off a bigger play. Just go pick up the first down, and that's exactly what he did. Play clock winding down. Car going to throw. Looking left sideline, but it's incomplete. Marcus Wheaton was the one he was looking for. That'll bring up second down. A pretty good coverage there in both of these defenses. They've had good coverage throughout this one. No doubt about it. And in today's NFL, where we're used to a bit more scoring, this feels almost like a well-pitched game in baseball on both sides where the tension continues to build. Who's going to make the big play? 
Hauled in by Wheaton over the middle. And he's brought down. 11 yards for number 11. So there on that play, offensively, they ran the crossing route. Defense was in zone coverage. So as a former DB, how tough is it to defend that? It's really difficult because your natural inclination is to chase the receiver and maybe leave your zone. So you have to have discipline in order to talk to your other coverage guys and let them know that that receiver's crossing from your zone to the next zone. He's coming your way. Make sure you have him. And then when the ball is actually thrown, secure the tackle. When they're moving on crossing routes, if you miss a tackle, it usually results in a big play. They come out here in the eye. Time running out here on the play clock. Back to the ground game here. Goal. And he'll be taken down at the 34. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. Well, so many times we look at a short run, and we praise the offense for trying to set the tempo and establish things. But the defensive guys, hey, they just won the battle there. It wasn't a big run given up. They don't always have to absorb the body blows. Sometimes they dish them out themselves. Second down, nine yards to go. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And now they're going to get him down right at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play there, so that doesn't help. Now they're looking up at a third and nine situation. The 25-yard line is what they need here. This is third down. All right, here we go. Throwing his car on third down. Drops it underneath to Gore. And he picks up the first down yardage as he takes it down to the 16. 18 yards there and a first down. And this will probably be the last play of the quarter. Back now at FedEx Field. It's Packer football here as they've got the lead as well to begin the fourth quarter. Just play after play after play on this long drive for the offense. On the counter, Gore. Right about 
bounce it outside, but he's only able to get it back to the line of scrimmage. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. So what will they do on the ground through the air? Let's see, second and nine. The fourth quarter here, they've got the lead. They want to keep it on the ground. That's what they're doing. Smart football. Keep the clock grinding. Keep it going. But you got to figure now, they're going to see more people stacked up at the line of scrimmage as they try and bleed it out. A nice pickup of 14, and it moves the stick, sets up a first and goal. Completion was given up, but that's why you play zone defense, so that you can have people... Thank you, Larry. So the picks are in. We welcome you to this Draft Champions Contest. I'm Brandon Gaunt, along with Charles Davis, ready to call the action. And let's get to it. Down to the field. It's time for kickoff. The punter pinion now to kick this one away. This is fielded at the goal line. And it'll be taken down just past the 20 at about the 21-yard line. carry and a short gain there as he'll get it up only to about the 24 give him three on first down it'll set up a second and seven not a big run on the first play of the drive but that doesn't necessarily mean it was a bad play sometimes you're just trying to settle in get your guys a little bit of contact and get things moving back to the ground this time with gore and he is going to lose yardage here. He'll wind up losing a yard on the play, and that'll lead here to a third down. Ordinarily, the responsibility for not letting edge pressure disrupt the play falls on the offensive tackles. Their job, to push that edge pressure so far wide they can't either get to the quarterback or the runner, especially on a draw. And it's caught by Parker. Javante Parker, 20, 10, 5, touchdown, Packers. Javante Parker, 77 yards, and the Packers have taken the early lead. Well, that's how they envisioned it, get the football to start the game and score it. And I don't know if that was scripted, was it an audible, or was it just a play call that they had in their pocket? No matter what, they had the right call on against the right defense, and they end up in the end zone. Chris Boswell now for the extra point. And it's good to make it 7-0 Packers. The following the 
touchdown now. It's Bradley Pinion on to kick this one away. This is Williams, and he's able to plow forward up to about the 29, just shy of the 30. Call it a gain of four on first, and that'll make it second down. For that kind of run on first down, that's a winning type of a run. That just sets things up for them moving forward as they begin the drive. Now Rodgers throwing on second down. They'll set up the screen. This is Williams. And he'll be brought down shy of the 40 at the 38-yard line. Nine yards on the pickup there, and it keeps the drive alive. For a second there, I thought that might break big. Screen pass. Looked like it was coming together. Looked like there was an opening. Still ended up with a solid game. Fresh set of downs here. Now flags, and we're going to get a delay of game. now for Rodgers. And it pops free. The collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down. So the defense has put them in a tough spot. It's second and long. Rodgers to throw on second down. And here the hookup good to Victor Cruz. And he's going to get this down to the 35-yard line. A gain of 32 that time. Coaches really don't care from what position they get this, but run after the catch ability, rack ability, is often the difference. And now look at this. Big gain, but a fumble. But this will get out of bounds, so possession will stay the same. I don't know about you, but I can hear and feel the sigh of relief all the way up here in our booth. That yeah, was palpable. The sideline, the friend there. No doubt about it. Ball goes over the sideline, able to retain possession, no turnover. <laughs> I know his coaches are screaming, just hang on to the ball, man. Now a first down carry, it's Williams. And he'll be taken down here at about the 11. Two yards on the carry there, it'll be second down. Partner, we know today's NFL is really built around the guy throwing the football. But these short runs, they still pay dividends because they can take their toll on a defense and they can add up as the game goes along. They control the clock, they control the ball, and that way you often control the game. On third down, here's Williams. And running room hard to come by here. He gets it down to the eight. But no move to get the offense off the field. They're going on fourth and five. Now hold everything here. We're going to get a timeout by the offense. They'll have two remaining as we step aside here in this first quarter. They'll break the huddle here and go for it. This is fourth down. Rodgers to throw for it on four. And this is incomplete. Boy, it looked like he had it and dropped it. And the Packers D comes up with a big stop. And Green Bay getting ready to go as they take the field. And they'll just simply be looking to build off the confidence of the last time out where they scored a touchdown. And confidence is powerful, isn't it? When you scored once, you feel like you can go back out there and get it done again. Doesn't matter what the defense throws at them. They feel like they're in a groove right now, and they want to get out there and show it. Yeah, hoping to stay in that groove here this go-around. Second down following the run. 
first play of the drive. Let's give credit all around. Excellent blocking. But the guy carrying the ball, he was the finisher. A really nice run. Car to throw on second down. And over the middle, this is Parker. 11 yards for number 11. Simple slant route, and Parker, really nice hard throw by the quarterback. Nice timing between the quarterback and the receiver. They were perfectly in sync, and he put it right on him on the inside route. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he'll go down right at the 30-yard line. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. You know what really fires up offensive linemen? When the guy that is carrying the ball behind them can create his own space and break a tackle along the way. With Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. Second quarter about to get underway with the Packers in possession of the football. They've got a second down at five here to start things out. Shift together here from the D-line. Now Carr throwing on second down. Out left here. It's complete to Wheaton. And they'll lose a yard that time, and that's going to lead to a third down. And never good on a pass completion there to go the wrong way. Lost yardage. No, for some reason it seems to work better when you throw it downfield or you <laughs> move the ball downfield running it that way, doesn't it? But in this case, if you're the defensive guys, you're energized. Executed well. And you've had the lost yardage play. That's going to feel good and look great in film. And it's caught by Parker. It's a big play there for Green Bay. 51 yards. That was a nice pickup. Some chunk yardage there. Some of those big yards downfield with a little bit of rack thrown in there. A little run after catch. And it came on a crossing route. I can just hear one of my friends who won four Super Bowls as a quarterback always trying to get it to Wheaton, and it's intercepted. And nothing but green grass here, middle of the field. It's Clay Matthews with a pick. And he will bring this one back. It's a pick six for a Panther touchdown. Short throw pick six right there, those linebackers. They love when those short throws come and those eyes get real wide, don't they? How about the anticipation on the play? Reading, reacting, and then the ability to catch the football and take it in the opposite direction. So we're right back where we started. All even as the kick's away. This is fielded at the goal line. They'll bring it back to just about the 25, call it the 24-yard line. The Packers offense now heading back out onto the field and following the pick six, and they have decent field position in throwing that pick six. We'll see how they attack this drive. And I think all you say to your guy is, listen, let's just take care of the football a little bit better. Make some better decisions on this drive, and they'll probably help him a little bit with maybe some really high percentage throws early to let him get settled back yeah, in. But they told him, they told us, they've got confidence. That, that's not a problem. Yeah, not a problem at all. They just want to make sure they get things settled down a little bit for their offense and give their defense a little bit of a chance to rest. And they're able to get this one across the 35. Give him 12 yards on that one. It earns him a fresh set of downs. Absolutely love the run right there. This guy's known for his quickness, but also for his speed. He's able to get to the second level almost before you blink if you give him any type of blocking. Always talk about slot receivers. They usually know it as quicker than fast. In this case, we've got a guy who's quick and fast, and he used it to great advantage. On first and ten, here's Carr, and he fires one incomplete. He was trying to get it to Frank Gore there, and now it's second down. Set eye. Gore. One yard, the official pickup there, so it's going to set up third and nine. But well, not a huge game there as we head towards the two minute warning. It'll be interesting to me to see what they decide to do after the timeout. And now we're circling here around the two minute warning. This is a setup play, trying to get one last one in before the clock warning. Right, 
time to step aside. My good friend Charles and I right back at you after this. Time in the pocket. Going deep here. Well, this is taken in. It's complete. And they pick up 25 as they convert on third. So in the second quarter, he's already up over 100 yards receiving now. And isn't 100 the magic number for a really good game for a receiver? So he got a chance to really shatter that and have a profound effect on this game. They go play action here on first down. He's going to hit his man out of the backfield complete. And he's going to get this inside the 30. The Panthers are going to take another timeout. So that means they're down to one remaining here as we head toward halftime. They'll run it now out of the gun. And not much of a hole there as he gets it down to about the 24-yard line. Now, hang on here. Timeout called. Timeout called by the defense. And with halftime on the horizon, they'll be out of timeouts from here forward. All right, here we go. Five and eight. They go in the round. This is Wheaton. And he'll be taken down near the 20 at the 21. Give him three on the run there. Now they're looking at a third and about five. Play number seven now coming up on the drive. Third and five. Try the end around. And he will have the first down before he's tackled at the 12. They get nine out of that one, and as a result, the drive continues. After that run for a first down, I don't know the confidence could be much higher for an offense. They're doing exactly what they want to do on this drive. So it'll be first down here after the run. Looking to jam the receivers at the line here. Press coverage look defensively. Now a play fake here on first down. Looks for Parker, and it's intercepted. And I think he's going to go. They're not going to get him. Picked off by the longtime charger, Eric Weddle. And he will bring this one back. It's a pick six for a Panther touchdown. I don't know who all is to blame there, but I love seeing pick sixes. Nothing like seeing someone pluck it out of the air and go the other way and see people try to change directions. Hard to do. So they throw the pick six. They'll get another shot at it now as this one's in the air. Fielded about a yard deep. And he'll take this up past the 20 and down at the 22-yard line. The Packer offense now ready to get back onto the field. And from this spot in the field with the clock where it's at, you think we're just going to see a knee and that's it? And I think in this situation, that's the proper play. But we do know there's some risk takers out there that may want to take one more shot before the clock runs out. They'll try and start the drive here with Gore. And he'll take it ahead to the 28-yard line. So we have reached halftime with a touchdown. That's the difference on the scoreboard. So both teams have their marching orders, and we'll get going again here in quarter number three. Fielded about a yard deep. And a pretty good 
return here. He'll be stopped just shy of the 25 at the 24-yard line. Out come the Panthers. They'll have it first on offense in the third quarter. They have the lead. Now they'll be looking for some separation here as we begin the third quarter. I like the way you term that because now I think they go a little bit deeper into their playbook. They like what they did in the first half. That worked okay. But in order to get the separation that you just talked about, change things up a little bit. Change your tendencies. Try and hit them a little bit more with some things they didn't see in the first half. Let's we'll see if they do just that. Play clock down to zero. And this is not the way to start a drive. Rodgers. And it's incomplete. Boy, he doesn't drop many like that one. Second down. So the incomplete pass brings up second down. They come up in an empty set. Four wide receivers, one tight end. Now Rodgers throwing on second down. And the hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. And he's certainly not a guy that drops that football very often. Indeed, because that's a bit of a surprise. I know he's in the middle of some traffic and people, bodies all around him, but he usually has the focus to haul that one in. So a second down incompletion now brings up third down. On third and long, it's Rodgers. And now another one thrown incomplete. They were trying to go to Marshall that time, and that brings up fourth down. Here's Bradley Pinion now. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. Well, sometimes you just have to take things into your own hands, don't you? I mean, the offense is really struggling in this game. They're the ones keeping things going. They have to continue to play at that level. Now it's Peterson. A good return there. Call it 13 yards. And it'll be Packer football here. First down and 10. Here's the Packers offense now getting set to start off this third quarter. They were able to get the stop defensively. Now a chance really to set the tone here in quarter three. They can really take charge, can't they? And this is probably how it was drawn up at the half. I think we can go inside the locker room, all right? And I think we would see up on the grease boards, stop them defensively, get the ball back for the offense, and let's go downfield and score. Seems simple, right? The last part, we have to find out if that's going to happen. But the first part went to perfection. Did exactly what they wanted, and now their offense has to pay it off. See if they can get the latter 50%. So nothing there, but maybe you blame that on the blocking. Yeah, at some point, you've got to win at the point of attack. And on that play, that was all the defense. They made it happen. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he is going to lose yardage here. He lost two there, and it's third down. The evaluation process in today's NFL does not take into account as much bulk as it does speed. And that's what we're seeing with the linebacker position. Those guys that can run, they can play at any spot because they can make plays on the opposite side of the line of scrimmage. Looks like the defense in press coverage here. On play action, it's Carr. And he will not get away from the pressure here. Carr taken down. 
Trent Murphy in there to drop him for a loss of 10. And it'll be fourth and long. Gets it away, and I don't think Peterson will get a chance to touch this one. Angling for the sideline. And this will be out of bounds at the one here. The 12-yard line. Here's the Carolina offense as they get ready to take over here. And on the last go-around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to come from deep inside their own territory, which means you're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency. Move the ball at least a few times on offense. Get a couple of first downs and hopefully flip the field. Yeah, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. Going for the deep ball. And got his man complete. That one goes for 38 yards. And that leads to a Carolina first down. And I guess, Charles, sometimes when you have a receiver well over six foot, you do that. Just put it up there, let him grab it, and he did. And it certainly appears like a 50-50 ball, right? We always talk about that one. Both sides have a chance to get it, the receiver or the guy covering him. But I think the odds actually are in favor of the offense. They can see the ball coming oftentimes before the defender can get his head around. So I think that really goes to like 70-30, and they should be able to go up and get it most of the time. And he got it there. So the offense looking at a second and eight. On second down, here's Rodgers. And incomplete there. A nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. Slants are so tough to cover because everything happens so fast. But sometimes it happens too fast for the guy catching the ball because all of his movements have to be quick off the line of scrimmage, and then all of a sudden the ball's right on top of you. And maybe he got a little bit ahead of himself there. Yeah, a lot of times coming in with good pace, and he dropped it. Throwing his Rodgers on third down. And he's got it to Hearns. It goes for a gain of 10, and it's a first down. Charles on the slant. You always need good ball placement. They got it there. Brandon, the quarterback, put it in the exact perfect spot, right to the upfield shoulder of the receiver, and he used his body to keep the defender away. To throw, it's Rodgers. Finding time. Over the middle, the connection to Hearns. And they get 28 yards on the...
Welcome to Franchise Mode, the best way to play through a season with your favorite team. In Madden 17, we're giving you more control and more decisions for more impact. Control the game like never before with Play the Moments. The Select the team you want to join. Don't worry, you'll be able to choose the role you plan in just a second. Start your season with recommended settings. If you wish to change roles or adjust options, use the tiles on the right. Your season starts now. Kick off your week by installing your game plan.
Kick off your week by installing your game plan. Kick off your week by installing your game plan. Welcome to Franchise Mode, the best way to play through a season with your favorite team. In Madden 17, we're giving you more control and more decisions. Select the team you want to join. Don't worry, you'll be able to choose the role you plan in just a second. Start your season with recommended settings. If you wish to change roles or adjust options, use the tiles on the right. Your season starts now. Kick off your week by installing your game plan.
It's been well noted that you were a fan of this team your entire life. That said, there's some concern that you might be too emotional or too involved to just let the football people do their jobs. How do you respond to those concerns? Kick off your week by installing your game plan. <laughs> 